return. What's up, mother shuckers? My name is Colonel Cornelius Cornwall, and I'm here today to introduce you to corn. Corn is a North American cereal plant that yields large kernels on a cob. It is also called maize because it's easy to get lost in its incredible flavor. Side effects of corn may include choking, I guess. Come down today and try some corn or we will sacrifice your newborn. <laughs> Good evening, race fans. Welcome here to the Iowa Corn 100 here at the Iowa Speedway. My name is Robert Hill Jr. Welcoming you to another round of pitpassnetwork.com playoff action. As you can see on your screen here tonight, 72 degrees Fahrenheit is the track temperature. So on the cool side, let's go ahead and take a look at your starting grid and it's some newcomers on the front row alex mccollum and cole cabry gonna make up row number one row two gavin higgins and jeff green a couple of our playoff guys row number three jay connor and justin wadsworth with michael hasek and andrew hardcastle last week's winner there in row number four row five is frank Fodi alongside dustin Dewar. dave carpenter carlos acosta make up row number six row seven tonight dylan havier and Jess Story, row eight, Caleb Pecumer and Jaden Racimus, row nine, Tyler Skordensky and a late Norgard with Dustin Haynes and Kyle Simmons rounding out the top 20. Robert Smith going to start 21st tonight. Jay Mitchell in his debut will roll off 22nd on the outside of row number 11. Brian Carrington in his debut on the inside of row 12 alongside Mitch Havier. Harrison Talent starting 25th tonight with Josh Osborne to his outside. Connor Thompson, Randy Canadal, and Corey Abbott going to round out the field and taking a look at tonight's format 100 laps no stages and of course four sets of tires as we take a look down at the field lights are already off on the iRacing.com pace truck he's going to get set to make his way to pit road next time by behind him of course like we mentioned alex mccollum and cole cabry uh typically i am joined up here by william white unfortunately he is under the weather tonight so we hope to see him uh, back with us next week. Folks, if you are joining us for the first time tonight uh, or your repeat viewer, let us know who is your pick to win here this evening. For me, it's going to be hard to go away from one of these guys on the front row. Alex McCollum, quickest in practice, quickest in qualifying. I'm going to have to go with that 31 of McCollum, but watch for the likes of Cabry, Higgins, and Story to be up here as well. Just Story, very quick in practice. Not the qualifying effort he would have wanted here tonight, but we'll see what he can do as we get set. The pace truck about to make his way down pit road. We're going to get it underway here momentarily for what should be another fantastic night of racing action. And we are green. It's McCollum and Cabry on the front row. Boot scooting boogieing out front here to get us underway. And we're wrecking already. It's Harrison Talon. Looks like Harrison just opted to come to a stop here. Let's see what happened with that number one car. Trying to heat the tires up just a little bit. Nearly gets into the back of Brian Carrington. Going to get hit there by Connor Thompson. A stack up behind one of our new drivers here. Unfortunately for Harry, just nowhere to go. He's going to get some damage on the front and rear end of his machine. Brian Carrington should be A-OK. -okay. We'll see what happens here momentarily with the call by race control. But caution number one already here. You see Harrison Talon gets that car moving once again. This man either has no luck or puts himself in those rough positions. So just unfortunate there for Harry. Able to continue on. Going to get a wave around to go back to the tail of the field. But Alex McCollum, Cole Cabry continuing to lead the way here. Well, I say continuing. They didn't really get a chance to spread their wings at all, did they? Absolutely not.
so we'll take a look here and see maybe we can grab a quick interview with one of the drivers in the field let's go ahead and maybe have a quick word with Corey Abbott let's see what the driver of the 21 has to say hey Corey it's Robert up in the booth you get a copy yes sir Late entrant to tonight's race, uh, got here last minute while the cars were on the grid. What's your outlook for this one? And uh, obviously, did you get a chance to do any testing ahead of time, knowing you might be a little late tonight? Yeah, I made sure to do some, I ran some uh, laps, I think it was like two days ago, just in case something like this happened. Um, I, the outlook was march our way to the front. Um, I almost got ran into before we even took the green, and then they wrecked right in front of me, so I have no idea what's in store for me. Well, Corey, we wish you the best of luck in this one. Hopefully, we get a chance to talk to you at the end of it. A long way to go. Hopefully, a lot of green flag racing in store ahead. I hope so. Well, let's hope, Corey. Best of luck, buddy. Thank you. That was Corey Abbott, driver of the number 21 machine for Abbott Motorsports. Again, as you see there, Alex McCollum out front. Cole Cabry there in second. Brent Jones hanging out over in the YouTube chat. Brent Jones, if you want to come hang out with us up in the booth, the door is always open, my friend. We look through the field here couple drivers uh want to make quick note here dustin haynes currently scored in 19th hello to his mother rose that's joining us tonight watching him wheel that number three machine for street limit racing let's see what he can do here tonight thanks for joining us each and every week William White, our race controller tonight, still battling the flu. So unfortunately not in the booth, like I mentioned. But uh, I, I I like to mention big movers through the race, but nobody's been able to move yet because we didn't really get to race yet. Five laps in, still under caution, just awaiting the opportunity for these guys to go green. Lights are off on the iRacing.com pace car. So we are going to go green this time by once again. It is Alex McCollum, the control car on the inside. Cole, uh, Cole Cabry on the outside as we are green flag racing. Hopefully we get to stay that way, at least for a handful of laps. As you see already, Jeff Green making a move to the inside of Gavin Higgins. They're going to go side by side through turns number one and two. Higgins able to jump out to that third spot. Green going to fall back a position here. He's going to hold steady in fourth just ahead of Justin Wadsworth, who's now side by side with Jay Connor behind them. It's Frank Fody duking it out with last week's race winner, Andrew Hardcastle. As you see, Michael Hasek just snuck off on by but Cole Cabry already under fire here from that uh, 20 machine of Gavin Higgins these guys duking it out this one should go rather quickly tonight folks so not a ton of racing to do again rather short track at uh, just under a mile about eight tenths of a mile nine tenths just about and 100 laps so shouldn't uh, be too long of a race whatsoever now we can take a gander at a couple guys moving forward one of those i mentioned earlier on jess story up there he's duking it out with dustin Dewar and his car owner carlos acosta right behind him he's up three spots and leighton orgard up three positions as well in the tanks gg number 12 car currently scored there in the 15th position josh osborne another driver on the up and up here so far he is is up three spots currently scored there in 23rd battling side by side with Shay Mitchell one of our new drivers here in the pit pass network Arca series and of course Corey Abbott like we mentioned before able to uh, join just as the cars were gridding he is up four positions but out front new leader we missed this just a moment ago Cole Cabry able to get by Alex McCollum work his way up into the lead as Jay Mitchell gonna go around cautions out here it's Mitchell and Osborne getting together to bring out caution 
Number two, as we take a look at the instant replay here, brought to you by RobilasPhoto.com. Watching Shay Mitchell up top in the eight. That's Josh Osborne now on the left side of your screen in the 07. He loses it and then gets up into the uh, Che Mitchell machine. We're going to ride on board here with Che Mitchell, mostly just because I like his helmet and I want to show you guys what he's got to offer here today. Rocking the uh, Mario helmet. It's a me, Mario. It's a me in the race, uh, in the crash here. As you just saw the impact, wheeling and dealing that machine, trying to keep it going straight. Going to get collected there by Josh Osborne. I think Jay Mitchell should be okay. Osborne, on the other hand, might have a little bit of damage. We'll see who comes down pit road. It's going to be Osborne. It's going to be Connor Thompson. Harrison Talon coming down. It looks like Che Mitchell will follow suit as well. We're going to step away real quick. When we come back, we'll take you through the early stages of today's Iowa Corn 100 right here on the Elite Racing Network. Don't go anywhere. It's Iowa Corn time. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. And we are back here at Iowa. It's the Iowa Corn 100. Pace truck it does have the lights off. We're going to get going next time by. Currently leading the way is Cole Cabry in the number 98, making his debut here tonight. Alongside him, his Speed Factor teammate is Alex McCullum. Of course, these drivers all driving under the Speed Factor banner. That's... Uh, Chase Cabery trying to build a little bit of a powerhouse over there. We see you, Chase. We see you. And don't you worry. We're going to fight right back with you and try to keep you boys honest as we get set. Pace trucks off. We're going to get going this time on lap number 15. A slow start there on the inside for Alex McCollum. That's going to allow Cole Cabery to break away with Jeff Green. Hefe Verde trying to break through right behind him here as they work their way through turns number one and two. The goal here, let's just try to get a green flag run in as these guys all duking it out for their positions a little bit further back. You see side by side, that is Alex McCollum and Jeff Green, the 2000 Bush Series champion, trying to get it done up here on the high side. The Turner Eye Center number two machine, or 38 machine, I should say, of Jeff Green duking it out, seeing what he can get done up there on the high side. Jay Connor, Gavin Higgins rounding up the top five. And here comes Franklin Fody doing a nice job there in that 41. Of course, Tyler Fody not with us here tonight, pretending that he's off on a little bit of a work trip in Atlanta. 
if you're tuned in here tyler let us know which one of your drivers do you think is going to go to victory lane here tonight but looking through the field watching a couple of battles brewing here well, we got to say up here, the guy that just set the fastest lap of the race, Cole Cabry, a 23.26. That is about a tenth quicker than the other quick time of the day set by Alex McCollum on a, a couple laps ago. That's not a proper sentence, but it is now. Dustin Doerr, Michael Hasek duking it out for the seventh spot. That's Doerr in seven, dropping down to the inside of Frank Fody. We're going to have a couple of our veteran drivers. Well, Frank, not really a veteran as of yet, but he is currently battling it out there with Dustin Doerr. Yeah, there we go, Tyler Fody tuned in here tonight he said he is pulling in uh, pulling for his old pops tonight we'll see how that one goes tyler uh, welcome to the chat glad to have you here looks like we got a wreck on the back and it oh no it's the 85 of kyle simmons i see jay mitchell involved in this one as well multiple cars getting involved harry Got caught up again as we take a look at this one on the Robilus Photography Replay Machine. RobilusPhoto.com for all your photography needs and all the coverage of the cautions. You're going to see here today, it looks like Simmons up on the high side, Haynes on the bottom. Some contact between the street limit drivers. Going to somehow collect Jay Mitchell as he's going to get uh, maybe just a little bit loose trying to avoid this incident. Collects Harry Talon, nearly gets up into the side of the 20. Well, does get into the side of Robert Smith down into Harry. Harry just nowhere to go, able to gather that car up and continue on. But early troubles there for Che Mitchell as a couple drivers coming down pit road here. It's going to be Jess Story. I thought Jess Story was coming down. Just a little bit of a fake and bake there. He's able to continue on as Robert Smith, Harrison Talon, Connor Thompson, and Kyle Simmons bring it down pit road let's see who we can maybe have a word with here as we are under caution once again let's talk to frank let's talk to frank Fody just just for tyler's sake here frank Fody, it's robert up in the booth you get a copy hey robert i do you look like you're doing a nice job out there so far. Just had a bit of a battle with Dustin Dewar. What are your thoughts on the car so far, and what's your outlook for this race? Well, the car is uh, its a little bit of a handful. It's really uh, very loose in the corner, getting off the corner. Uh, I'm just going to try to hang on here and see if I can just keep pace with these guys and stay out of trouble. Yeah, that's obviously a, a good call, trying to keep it clean, keep it up there. Uh do you think maybe you have something for these uh, top guys here tonight? Obviously, Cabri and McCollum have been pretty quick, but you've been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a couple of the other guys up there in the top five. Yeah, uh, definitely not the guys up front. I mean, they're they're light speed uh, ahead of me there you know, as far as pace, but uh, who knows? Well, maybe I can get a few here as it goes on, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. All right, Frank, we'll get you back down to your team. Wish you the best of luck in this one, and hopefully we get to talk to you at the end. All right, sounds good. Thanks. That is Frank Fody currently scored there in the sixth spot. Tyler, that one was for you, my friend. Of course, you tuned in from, I think, Atlanta, where you're apparently doing some work. We'll, uh, we'll see about that when you return tomorrow for what should be an absolutely uh, crazy race on the road course. We'll see how that one goes. Chase Cabry tuning in and, and chiming in there in the comments saying, Alex is gonna blow Cole's doors off in about 20 laps. We'll keep an eye on that. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I've seen what Alex can do in these race cars and pretty much any car. And he's gonna be pretty darn quick. 23 laps in almost a quarter of the way already as Cabri, McCollum, Green, Connor, and Higgins, the top five. It's Fody, Dewar, Hasek, Story, and Norgard currently up there inside the top 10. As we continue to watch and see what these guys have in store for us here tonight. We're going to talk to Andrew Hardcastle a little bit later. Last week's winner. See how he's feeling so far at the short track at Iowa. We'll try to tune in or... Uh, 
check in, I should say, maybe with the likes of David Carpenter scored a little bit further back in the field, but having himself a half decent day was pretty quick in practice. We'll see what he can do, but lights are off on the pace truck finally. Seems like Fred did not want to hit that button, wanted to keep us pacing, wanted to keep us under caution, which nobody likes being under caution. Nobody likes pacing. It's not a good time. Is Josh Osborne going to leave pit road late there? He did not beat the pace truck off, so we'll see if he gets himself a penalty on this one but uh, it's going to be Cabri the control car once again he opts to take the high side ahead of Jay Connor on the inside McCollum is going to have Jeff Green behind him we'll see if McCollum is able to get a better restart this time last time didn't look too good on the restart wasn't really able to stay toe to toe with Cole Cabri it allowed Jeff Green to get up there and duke it out with him now Green back there in third of course McCollum did get him back but pace truck about to hit pit road we'll see what these guys can do as we get set to battle it out once again and another great start by Cabri and another slow start by Alex McCollum but watch that car like the wick and start fighting it out here moment Momentarily. So Cabri out front. Jay Connor there in second. It's McCullum up to third. Fody right there duking it out with Jeff Green, who gets passed on the high side by Gavin Higgins. Just behind him, his teammate Dustin Dewar, as they continue to duke it out for position number five on the racetrack. Move Gavin Higgins up to fifth. And folks, of course, those indicated in yellow on the scoring pylon are your playoff drivers. As Alex McCullum able to make that move on Jeff. Jay Connor, they're going to be side by side for second now as they work their way into turn number three. We got Cabri and we got Bubba Driver up here in that top two. Of course, the 31 and the 98 both making their debuts tonight. Jay Connor, uh, regular in the series, one of our playoff drivers, looking to rebound here, get up there and, and battle it out for the win. He was involved in the late wreck at Talladega just one week ago. And just an update, folks, for those of you at home, Kyle Simmons is currently exiting pit road. Josh Osborne just hit pit road. And Harry Talon still having an extended visit down there, maybe grabbing a snack, maybe uh, drinking a Red Bull. We'll see what he has in store for us, but I'm sure we'll see him back out here a little bit later on as a battle brewing towards the rear here. It is Dave Carpenter and Corey Abbott just ahead of them. It's a battle of the Lake Norman guys, of Caleb Pecumer and Dylan Havier. Havier currently scored there in 16th. Is somebody going for a slide? They're able to gather it up, thinking we're on a ski hill here. We are not. We are in the cornfields of Iowa. Not much goes on here, except we're going to shuck, we're going to huck, and we're going to race around this racetrack. As out front, once again, Cole Cabry continuing to lead. Let's check in and see what battles we got brewing on the racetrack. Looks like Andrew Hardcastle and Carlos Acosta intertwined in a battle here. Tyler Skordensky just behind them. Of course, Skordensky picked up the win to end the regular season, uh, locking himself in the playoffs by just a point, I do believe it was, over Harrison Talon. So we'll see what he can do here. Currently scored just outside the top 10 in position number 12. A couple other battles brewing here on the racetrack. You see it right there. Jaden Racimus and the 57 of Dylan Havier currently doing a nice job there trying to work his way up towards the front of the field. 30 laps in the books, trying to work our way up to the middle portions of today's race. Kordensky gets a little bit sideways, able to gather it back up, but that creates a line of cars back here behind the Justin Wadsworth machine. It's Acosta, it's Racimus, it's Javier, it's Pecumer all together as Abbott and Carpenter continue to battle it out. Corey Abbott of 11 spots already started on the uh, back of the grid here towards the beginning of this one now charging forward and just an update on a couple other new entrants tonight Brian Carrington currently scored in 25th and Jay Mitchell there in 26th and just a note these two drivers driving for the BOR Simsport team 
that is owned by my usual Tuesday night co-commentator of William White. And you see a bit of traffic ahead of the leaders. That's Josh Osborne. So these guys already trying to strategize and think how they're going to get around that machine, not uh, have them get in the way too much here. As Cabry now has McCollum closing that gap here. The 31 machine on a bit of a mission, closing the door on the cool Cabry car out front. We'll see what they can do as we are 15 laps or so away from halfway. Cole Cabry and Alex McCollum continue to be the class of the field. We're going to quickly dip back a little further. Actually, no, we will keep our eyes on this lap traffic. Just make sure everything goes A-OK. -okay. Osborne goes to the top. McCollum gets a little bit sideways trying to get by him here, but everything is going to work out for these guys. Able to continue on as Cabry and McCollum now get even closer. Three tenths of a second is the gap between these guys, but another battle brewing back here around Frank Fody and Jess Story. Story takes a look to the outside. It's Fody holding on to the upper middle lane there trying to block the run by Jeff Story but now opens up the inside Story taking a peek to the inside Jeff Green there as well he took an opportunity to take that Turner I center machine have a look to see if he wanted to make that move on Frank Fody ops better rip Fody holds on to position number five years they continue to jet their way down the back straightaway Jeff Story gets a run he takes a look to the inside not quite able to get there yet now he does they're going to be side by side coming off of turn number four Fody up top story in the middle nearly made contact there both drivers getting a little bit loose on exit as we're going to jump back towards the front cool cabry and alex mccullum battling it out here's mccullum closing the gap here the 31 getting closer and closer to the rear end of the cool cabry 98 speed factor machine no paint schemes on these guys tonight but it is a-okay i'm sure next time we see them they'll be all decked out in speed factor gear and uh, we'll be sure to highlight that but the Battle is on amongst teammates for the race lead as a little bit further back. Hasek and Norgard duke it out. Story and Fody continue to duke it out for position. Let's go above and watch this battle play out here as McCollum takes a peek to the inside. Cabry moves his way up to the top side, trying to keep it wide and keep it friendly here. See what he can do to hold on to that race lead ahead of his teammate. Not really risk anything too much amongst these guys. You don't want to wreck your team teammate but you still want to kick their butt on the racetrack each and every time that is the ultimate goal be the best on your team and the best in class as these guys duke it out for the top spot here comes alex mccullum to the inside cabry gonna try to hold that top lane we'll see who gets it here as they work their way through turns one and two mccullum on the inside cabry up top they're gonna be side by side down the back straight away cabry with a bit of an advantage here we'll see if mccullum can take a deep dive into the corner Without getting too tight, Cabry does come down a little bit. Try to close off that run that McCollum could get on exit here. But at the line, taking lap 43, uh, 42, I should say. It is Cole Cabry ahead of Alex McCollum once again as we take a brief gander looking at battles through the field we continue to be side by side here it's a late norgard on the inside michael hasek up top take, take the 12 double it up you get the 24 and that's what we got here is 24 of hasek gonna lose out that position there to a late norgard the battle back on up front they're gonna be side by side once again mccollum on the inside cabry up top getting closer and closer is these two drivers not trying to make any contact but still trying to do whatever they possibly can to get up there and get that position as McCollum and Cabry sharing a lane here on the exit of turn number four. I think Alex McCollum may have the advantage. No, it's Cabry by just a little bit here at the line. 44 laps in the books. It's McCollum now with the slight edge over Cole Cabry. We'll see who, who gives up first, who backs out of it and stays in line. But these guys racing hard but racing clean for that race lead and doing a damn good job of it as on the high side continues to be Cole Cabry on the bottom side continues to be Alex McCollum 
as these guys putting on a great show for us here. You can see just how close they are as we ride on board here with Cole Cabry. You can see him working that wheel. There's McCollum down on the inside as we're going to jump back out, take a look from our TV cameras. That is McCollum continuing to try to get as close as he possibly can without actually hitting his teammate. Great battle amongst these guys. Putting on a show for us here as we quickly approach the halfway point in today's race. What a good one we've had so far. Can't wait to see what the ending of this one has for us as uh, the battle between Frank Fody now picking up with the Leighton Norgard a little bit further back. We'll take a quick gander at this one. That's Norgard on the bottom. Fody up top. Cabri able to pull away just a little bit from Alex McCollum as McCollum going to slot back into line. So we'll keep our eyes on this battle now. That is for position number seven. Seventh on the inside is Norgard. Eighth on the high side is Frank Fody as they continue to duke it out just a little bit further ahead of them though is Jeff Green and Jess Story battling for that fifth spot story up on the high side green on the inside they're catching up to gavin higgins higgins currently scored in position number four and like scott crump said those guys just showing off at the front but crump they're doing a nice job of this guess what they're side by side once again that's cabry on the high side mccollum on the inside is either one of them gonna make this move or are they just gonna stay side by side and just show us yeah we're here we got the speed factor we're going to get this dub as well Off of turn number two, Cabry with a bit of an advantage. McCullum still there, still square as he's about to fall back and lose that position to the 98 of Cole Cabry. We're coming up to lap number 50, 49 in the books, 51 to go. Getting to that halfway point. We'll hit that halfway down the back straight away. But these guys have done a nice job. We had a couple early cautions. And uh, unfortunately for some of these guys, got caught up in a few of them, able to continue on though as continuing we do out front as here we come 50 to go this time for Cole Cabry and Alex McCollum as McCollum. Well, he's going to take another look to the inside lane here. He just wants to get that pass done. And once he does, I really do wonder if he's going to be able to pull away just a little bit, especially after the really tight battle these guys just had tearing up those tires a little bit not necessarily uh, giving each other too much space but also not racing each other dirty by the way shout out to every single one of you tuned in with us here tonight again let us know in the chat where you're watching from who you're cheering for as mccullum gets a little bit loose there gets up into the side of the cole cabry machine as they continue to duke it out down the front straight away actually that was the back straight i do believe a cabry is going to continue to lead yes that was the back straight away as they come off of turn number four it's cabry at the line ahead of alex mccullum let's jump back a little bit further and see what we got going on here. It's Jess and it's Jeff battling it out to see who has the better two letters at the end of their name. Is it double F's or double S's? As it's green on the inside story up top. Shout out to Raymond Hanneman hanging out in the chat tonight. Daytona winner in the truck series is, hey, look at that. McCollum finally able to make the move. Never mind. Cole Cabry says, we're not done yet, buddy. He's going to make the move. Slide back up to the race lead. These guys just trying to put on a damn show for us here tonight. And they're doing a great job of it. McCollum all over the rear end of the Cole Cabry machine. Now going to dive back to the inside. These guys want to put on an entire show by themselves out front. And they've done a great job of that so far. Shout out to these guys. But uh, we are going to gander back at a couple other battles we got going on in a moment. As these two nearly come come together. McCollum continues to be on the inside. Cabry up top. Will McCollum try to take that high lane when he gets the opportunity? That's a big question here because Cabry has been able to really make it work. Able to get those good runs off of the corner but as Raymond Hanneman did say in the chat I mean these guys have pulled away from third place Jay Connor while they continue to duke it out and that's absolutely exceptional here as Jeff Green and Gavin Higgins going to battle it out side by side for position number four Norgarden Story going to be side by side just a little bit further back so these guys all duking it out for position as well as the front does get separated by just a little bit and I say that and we'll be back there in a moment they're going to oh Norgard around never mind we're under caution Norgard Story Higgins all together 
I feel like I just yelled Norgard around when we were at Talladega last week. A late Norgard not having much luck here today. We'll see what that number 12 machine had happened there. Looks like Jeff Green clears up ahead of Gavin Higgins. Jeff Story reacts to that machine, gets down into the side of a late Norgard, sends him around. Gavin Higgins going to get collected as well. That'll bring out yet another caution here at the Iowa Speedway. I'd expect everyone to come down pit road here, grab some tires with just over 40 laps remaining. Watching Alex McCollum out front. Your top 10 as they run before pit stops. McCollum, Cabry, Connor, Green, Higgins, the top five. Wadsworth, Hasek, Dewar, Fody, Acosta, the top 10. Just of note, Corey Abbott just outside the top 10 now. Scored in position number 12 as here we come. We're coming down pit road. It is going to get rather busy here as the field going to work their way down. This is a terrible camera angle. Great job, cameraman, of apparently hiding in in a dunk tank here today and of course yes playoff implications on that one Jess Story and a late Norgard both involved but as the field comes down pit road we're going to step away take a commercial break when we come back we'll take you to the conclusion of the Iowa Corn 100 don't go anywhere we'll be right back from the earth I rise and to the earth I one day will return what's up mother shuckers my name is Colonel Cornelius Cornwall, and I'm here today to introduce you to corn. Corn is a North American cereal plant that yields large kernels on a cob. It is also called maize because it's easy to get lost in its incredible flavor. Side effects of corn may include choking, I guess. Come down today. And try some corn, or we will sacrifice your newborn. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year.
And we are back here at Iowa. It's the Iowa Corn 100 working caution number four after an incident involving Jess Story, Elaine Norgard, and Gavin Higgins put us under caution once again. But just a quick look at who's up front. It's Cole Cabry and Alex McCollum on the front row. Jeff Green, Jay Connor, row two with Michael Hasek, Justin Wadsworth in row number three. Dustin Dorf, Frank Fody, Carlos Acosta, and Andrew Hardcastle round out the top ten as the pace truck about to work his way to pit road we're gonna go green with 38 laps remaining it's been all the speed factor boys out front in mccullum and cabry as mccullum the control car finally gets himself a good restart not sleeping this time as he rockets out to the race lead he's gonna pull cole cabry right with him as he works his way into that second spot we're gonna be side by side for third jeff green up top jay connor on the bottom is oh Corey abbott goes around Corey Abbott goes around, but we will stay under the green flag. Let's take a quick gander at what just happened to him to uh, not bring out a caution here in that 21 Abbott Motorsports machine. Looks like he's getting set to take a dive to the inside of Carlos Acosta. Just gets sideways, loses it. He's going to fall all the way back to 25th. He will continue on, though, as just taking a look at a couple battles through the field. Jeff Green just ahead of Michael Hasek. It's Hasek closing that gap, trying to get to his outside. Now they are going to be side by side as he goes to the inside. We saw Andrew Hardcastle take a step out a little bit further back he's gonna work his way up to that eighth position but we'll keep our eyes on the battle for fourth now uh, actually this is the battle for third is green on the high side currently holds on to position number three Hasek on the inside now trying to work his way up to that top three we come around now 35 laps to go it's Alex McCollum Cole Cabry Jeff Green Michael Hasek and Justin Wadsworth the top five it's Frank Fody Jay Connor Andrew Hardcastle Carlos Acosta and Dustin Dewar up there in the top 10 as you see Jaden Racimus trying to work his way to the inside of Caleb Pecumer that's your battle for the 11th spot on the racetrack nice drive so far by Caleb Pecumer and Jaden Racimus but I gotta give a shout out to this guy right here Connor Thompson he was one of those guys that was caught up in one of the early incidents actually the first incident of the night he was able to get some damage repair currently up 14 spots and scored in position number 13 on the racetrack as Jaden Racimus drops down all the way to the yellow line just ahead of these guys he's going to continue to be side by side with Caleb Pecumer as folks the battle for the lead getting ready to kick off again as Cole Cabry closing that gap now on Alex McCollum and right, right as I say that though McCollum starting to pull away once again so we'll jump back to the battle here with Connor Thompson, Dylan Haver, Caleb Pecumer, and Jaden Racimus. A four-car battle, essentially, for 11, 12, 13th, and 14th. As Thompson has a little kiss with the outside wall there. He's going to keep it moving in the right direction. Jaden Racimus, Caleb Pecumer up there as well. These guys doing a mighty nice job. It's Frank Fody going to be intertwined in a battle here with Jake Connor. Fody on the inside. Connor up top. That's Andrew Hardcastle just behind him. Is that that is sixth, seventh, and eighth on the racetrack. These guys duking it out for positions as well and doing a mighty fine job of it here so far tonight. Yeah, great observation here by Raymond Hanneman. Cabry has better drive into the corners. McCollum looks like he has better drive off. Yeah, I'm noticing that as well. Uh, depends on the corners and depends on the positioning here. Is Cabry going to take a dive down to the inside? Looks like they're going to go side by side once again. But for the first time tonight, Cabry has the inside to work with. Meanwhile, McCollum up on the high side. And that seems to be the dominant lane so far in these battles for position. Looks like McCollum able to hold on to that spot. Less than 30 to go now. It's McCollum, Cabry, Green, Hasek, and Wadsworth, the top five. The battling for the lead continues, as does the battle for sixth. As it, uh, seventh, sorry, as it's Hardcastle on the high side. Fody on the inside, but we got to watch this one. It's Cabry back on the inside. McCollum back on the high side. These guys just continuing to duke it out here tonight. Doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job of, as we look back, from the rear end of the, uh, there's the rear end of the Alex McCullum machine looking back towards Cole Cabry, of course, uh, 
those Cabred boys, man. They know how to get it done here in Elite. Watch for Cole to be up here momentarily, duking it out once again with his teammate, Alex McCollum, out front. But these guys doing a really, really fine job here this afternoon out front and doing their thing is let's watch a battle a little bit further back it's dave carpenter and tyler skordensky battling it out for position number 14 on the racetrack so not really too deep in the field about the midway points raymond i don't know about that man i, I think jeff's a very strong car tonight i think he's got a good third place car I don't think he has anything for the Speed Factor boys up front here today in Cabry and McCollum, but we'll keep our eyes on it. We'll see what they can do. I want to check in again on some of our rookies here tonight. Brian Carrington trying to do all the laps. That was his goal tonight. Currently scored back there in the 25th position. Che Mitchell in 22nd. That's Harry Talon on the inside. Talon is two laps down, trying to work his way back towards that lead lap. And then, of course, Cole Cabry and Alex McCollum battling for the race lead. Those are the other two new drivers here tonight as we come to 25 to go. Coming to 24 this time already getting down to the closing stages of this one here tonight. Who's going to be eating the corn in victory lane a little bit later on? And who's going to be crying? overspilt kernels we'll find out very shortly as we are of course approaching rapidly towards the end of this one we got a battle here it's Jess story and brian carrington gonna go side by side for position story up top carrington on the bottom of course Jess story one of our playoff drivers currently all the way back in 25th the second lowest of our playoff guys the only one in a worse position here tonight is gavin higgins who is currently scored one lap down and just an update from the lead alex mccullum has been able to get that race lead and pull away now half a second over cole cabry with 22 laps to go as we'll watch this battle between frank Fody and andrew hardcastle hardcastle up to seventh now Fody there in that eighth spot we talked to him a little bit earlier was hoping to have an opportunity maybe to get up here and run at least around the top five guys so we'll see what he can do uh in the closing stages maybe pick up a couple points help him out of course one of our playoff drivers doing a nice job there just in the second half of that top 10 Another battle brewing here looks to be a late Norgard and Jaden Racimus. That's Racimus up on the high side. Norgard on the bottom. His car has seen better days. That's for sure. That front end looks like it's been punched back as they come to 20 to go. This is the battle for 16th on the racetrack. Norgard just trying to limit the loss here today. We'll see what he can do a little bit later. But out front continues to be Alex McCollum. McCollum, Cabry, Green, Hasek, Wadsworth continues to be the top five here. Is that battle between Norgard and Racimus is picked back off here. They continue to be side by side down the back straight away. That's Racimus up top. Norgard continues to be the driver working the inside lane. Another battle just behind this. Randy Canadal and Robert Smith duking it out for 18th on the racetrack. Canadal currently has the advantage and has pulled away just a little bit from the Robert Smith machine. And speaking of pulling away, well, you can see it off the nose here. Cole Cabry, Alex McCollum has started to pull away nearly a second of a lead over the Cole Cabry number 98 machine. So getting down to the closing laps of this one and so far, unless we get a caution, it's looking like it's definitely going to be the Alex McCollum show in the closing stages of this one. But Jeff Green actually closing the gap just a little bit there on the uh, Cool Cabri machine. Let's see if we can get a look at the lap times. They've been relatively close. I mean, Cabri was a tenth of a second quicker than Jeff Green last time by. 
but consistently um, consistently close amongst these drivers. So we'll see what they can do as we will come to 15 to go this time. Here's another battle on the racetrack. Dustin Door, Caleb Pecumer duking it out for the final spot inside the top 10. That's Door up top. Pecumer on the bottom just behind them. Connor Thompson, Dylan Javier battling it out. Dave Carpenter there waiting in the wings for one of these guys to make a mistake and be able to pounce but uh, doesn't look like they're going to get the opportunity to do so as of yet. And I just want to point out here, let's open up the track map. You can see the first place car of Alex McCollum. He's got about a quarter and a half until he gets to the tail of the field, until he gets to the lap traffic, which is currently consisting of Brian Carrington and Che Mitchell. As Jeff Story does take to pit road, I think his night might be coming to an end here. His damage may be putting a lot of extra force on those tires. As yes, it looks like Jess Story has called it a day. So Story going to park it and he'll have to write a new chapter next week as we continue on with the playoffs. But out front continues to be a McCollum by 1.3 seconds over Cabry. Another 1.4 back to Jeff Green, who has about seven tenths of a second back to Michael Hasek. Justin Wadsworth looking to the inside of Hasek as they battle it out for the fourth and fifth positions. And some of these guys that are in the playoffs, as you can see by the scoring tower, have not had much luck to start these playoffs have really found themselves stuck in the back of the pack or involved in some wrecks and guys like green Hasek, wadsworth have been able to take advantage and really put themselves in a good position so we'll see what they can do as the playoffs do continue but coming to 10 to go next time by it's going to be alex mccullum going to pick up uh, that 10 to go signal getting down to the nitty and the gritty here as he's just hoping it stays green because if it does it is going to be all Alex McCullum here as he comes around 10 laps to go this time for the driver of the number 31 speed factor machine. He's got his teammate Cole Cabry uh, 1.6 seconds behind him now as the battle has begun here between Hasek and Wadsworth. Wadsworth on the inside. Hasek up top as let's jump up and take a little gander from the drone camera. You can see that 24 of Hasek working his way up up towards the wall not quite to the wall but uh, seeing what he can do to get that run off the corner there on the inside wadsworth continuing to battle back but these guys already just taking off the laps this one's gone by rather uh really quickly honestly as we are not even an hour into it and we're nine laps to go as michael hasek nearly has a kiss with the outside wall there he's gonna surrender that four spot there to justin wadsworth as they continue to work their way down the front straightaway, eight laps to go for Alex McCollum. And you see the gap there. That's first, that's fourth. That's, uh, that's pretty darn big between those drivers. McCollum gonna get seven to go this time. Watching Jeff Green there, cool Cabry between them in the second spot. Then it's Connor who's trying to hold off Frank Fody, who's trying to hold off Andrew Hardcastle as these guys duking it out four possessions here we're gonna be five to go in no time here folks and it has been an absolute great race here today i heard the term slobber knobber earlier on and i, I didn't want to use it but let's just throw it in there it's been a slobber knobber here tonight that just doesn't sound right but uh, jay connor and frank Fody battling it out for position number six as we are six to go here on the racetrack at iowa it's been a good night so far and for some, it's been much better than others. As you see, Alex McCollum, a two and a half second lead over his teammate Cole Cabry as he goes by the lap car of Che Mitchell up there on the high side. Mitchell going to move himself up and out of the way, let the leader go on by, and uh, just try not to be of any influence to the results on this one five to go barney the flagman did display all five fingers last time by just ahead of the leader now is the lap car of brian carrington he's trying to keep himself on the lead lap and just be able to say that he finished every single lap of the day but it might be rather tough here. As here comes Alex McCollum, four to go. Let's watch this battle between Tyler Skordinski and Randy Canadal. It's Canadal just ahead of Skordinski now. He was able to clear through and not have to worry about that driver too much whatsoever. 
as it looks like the closest battle on the racetrack is this one. Jake Connor, Frank Fody battling for position number six. Fody to the inside. Connor up top. We'll see what these guys are able to get done as we're getting down to the end of it. Three laps to go. McCullum did phase three to go, and I can hear that freezer creaking. It's about time for popsicle sticks, baby. Two to go this time by for Alex McCullum as he's going to have some lap traffic ahead of him. He's got the gap. He could stay stationary. Well, not stationary because then he'd lose the race, but he could stay where he is right now. Not really worry too much about Brian Carrington and Josh Osborne up ahead of him as two laps to go is displayed. Going to take it dive to the outside of Brian Carrington. Carrington down to the inside. Going to let the leader go on by. Now he's going to slip and slide his way through to the inside of Josh Osborne. Is the white flag going to come out? One lap to go here for Alex McCollum. As you see the rest of the field cycling through here, McCollum going to work his way down the back straightaway for the final time here tonight. Looks like he is well on his way to his first victory here in the Pit Pass Network Arca Series. PitPassNetwork.com for all your motorsports needs from news to reviews and interviews. Checkered flag. It's Alex McCollum. Cole Cabry going to come home second. Jeff Green there in third. Wadsworth, Hasek, Cotter, Fody, Hardcastle, Acosta, Dewar, and Pecumer. Uh, well, Pecumer 11th, but Dewar rounding out the top 10 here today. Then it's Pecumer, Thompson, Carpenter, Dylan Havier, Leighton Norgard, Jaden Racimus, Randy Canadal. Corey Abbott, Tyler Skordensky, and Dustin Haynes, the top 20 again. Shout out to Rose tuned in tonight and watching her son, Dustin Haynes, wheel his way to a top 20. Then it's Robert Smith, Mitch Havier, Brian Carrington, Shay Mitchell, Gavin Higgins, Harrison Talon, Josh Osborne, Jess Story, and Kyle Simmons as the teammates celebrate. We're going to step away. We'll be right back with our top three finishers. Racing isn't easy. But experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. And we are back here. It is the Iowa Corn 100, and we're joined by our third-place finisher, Jeff Green. Jeff, a great run by you tonight. Why don't you walk us through your night and what more you needed to get up there to battle it out with Cabri and McCollum? Uh, it, it was a good night. Uh, car drove pretty pretty good. I just – Alex and Co. they were like in another zip code. I mean, they could go as fast as they wanted to. I guess I kind of figured out they was teammates. They was messing with each other a little bit. So, And let, allowed me to stay a little bit closer, but – it was a good night for a Turner Eye Clinic Chevy. Uh, you know, I, always, I thought I might be just, well, I don't know. I didn't really plan on Cole and Alex being here. So I thought I had a pretty good uh, pretty good set for 
to make, you know, have a chance to win, but uh, still running those guys, those guys are really, really good. So um, just proud of, of what we've done tonight, what we accomplished, and it's a good race. I mean, not a lot of caution, so uh, it's always beneficial when you can run green, especially at Iowa. It's just the fall off so much, and it seems like if you can save a little bit and get your car driving better than the next guy, you can beat him. So it's a good night for us. And, and Jeff, obviously uh... – the top finishing playoff driver, so that should be good for your points here tonight as well. But looking ahead to Chicago Land, what's your outlook for that race? And do you think maybe we can see at the top of the podium for that one? <clears throat> Those two guys stay at home, I might. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, looking at Chicago, it's always it, it'll be a pretty much a wide open race, I would think. You know, pretty a lot of throttle, and uh, so you'll have to make sure your car handles well and um, stay with the the lead pack to be able to to make lap time. So I don't know, look forward to it. I always look forward to another good race. So hopefully it'll, it'll, uh, it'll play into our hands over there. That's all we can hope for Jeff. That's for sure. But, uh, before we let you go here tonight, any sponsors you want to thank or shout outs you want to give for making this finish happen for you? Uh, just, uh, Turner Eye Clinic Clifford in, in uh, cabin, Arkansas. If anybody's going through Arkansas, need their eyes checked or a pair of glasses, give them a holler. And, uh, He's a good man. They appreciate everything he does for me and Goody with Good Do Good and Dusty and Dave Carpenter, their teammates, and they always uh, they they always help. So that's the main thing. Well, Jeff, congratulations on the podium, and we look forward to seeing you next week at Chicago. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all too. Forgot about y'all for, uh, for what y'all do. Thank you. Absolutely. That's Jeff Green, your third place finisher here tonight. Now joined by Cole Cabry. Hey, Cole, it's Robert up in the booth. You get a copy. Yes, sir. Congratulations on a solid run here tonight, coming home in that second spot. What more did you need to get up there and beat your teammate? Uh, it seemed like I needed a lot more there at the end. Uh, that that run right before we had that caution was really fun. I knew I just had to pinch him every time he got to the to the bottom of me, and I could keep him there for a while. <laughs> Now, obviously, uh, it was a really strong race for you. You were able to lead a bunch of laps, get up there, and, and contend for the win. What are your thoughts on the race as a whole and, and, and your night from start to finish? Uh, it was fun. Uh, I haven't ran the ARCA car around Iowa in a long time. Uh, I mean, tires wore off really fast, as we saw. Um, yeah, we got the lead early, and then uh, I tried to just keep a steady pace, and uh, it didn't last for too long there, and Alex got around me. And I got to ask you, obviously, uh, your first start here in Elite. What's your, what's the outlook for your future here? Do you plan on taking part in future uh, future series beyond the ARCA series? Yeah, I, I definitely want to run Cup and Xfinity. I just want to get through these races, and uh, hopefully I can move up uh, quick and be able to run the Xfinity car. Those cars are super fun, uh, light. They're lightweight, heavy power, no downforce. So uh, I'm excited to run the Xfinity when I can. And uh, for those that don't know you, we got to ask, who's the better driver, you or your brother? Uh, I'd go with Chase. He can he can school me any day. Uh, I'll get lucky here and, the, here and there, but I'll give it to Chase. <laughs> All right. We'll give him the upper hand just today, but we'll see on the track. We'll let the uh, drive and do the talking. But uh, before we let you go, any shout-outs you want to give, sponsors you want to thank for making this finish happen for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Elite, first of all, for putting the series on. Uh, Speed Factor went 1-2 one, one, tonight, and uh, we were missing Chase, but we'll be back Sunday for the trucks. All right, congratulations, Cole, on the second-place finish, and we look forward to seeing you Sunday night. Appreciate it. That was Cole Cabry, your runner-up here tonight, and why don't we go ahead and bring in the race winner, Alex McCollum. Alex, is Robert up in the booth? You get a copy. Yes, sir. Congratulations on the solid finish here tonight. You picked up the victory ahead of your teammate, Cole Cabry. Why don't you walk us through your night? And uh, what what was the edge that you had over your teammate to just run away with it at the end? Uh, Yeah, that first run we had in the beginning, um, Cole kind of went hard in the beginning, and I kind of just kept a steady pace and kind of just took care of my right front and right rear just to make sure I had enough tire there at the end. Um, but we slowly caught him and then I got to him and then we put a pretty good race on there. Uh, he kept holding my door and I kept washing up, but it was a really good race between us and, uh, glad we were able to brawl it out. 
Absolutely. You guys put on one heck of a show out there side by side for uh, I don't even know how many laps, but it was definitely fun to follow here on the broadcast. And looking ahead to future races here in the Pit Pass Network Arca Series, we go to Chicagoland next week. Can we expect to see you there? And if so, what's your expectations for that race? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to make as many races as I can. And uh, Chicago should be pretty good. I feel like you can run the top and bottom middle there. Also, like here. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. Um, we'll just take one lap at a time. It was really fun to race with Cole there. And, uh, unfortunately, we missed Chase. So, um, hopefully, he'll show up next week and all three of us can brought out. Now, Chase was pretty active in the YouTube chat tonight, filling us in on your nickname of Bubba Driver. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and where that comes from? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we are at, I think it was summer shootout and, um, I guess somebody just called me Bubba driver and, uh, it kind of just stuck and, uh, you know, it, just, it goes along with my personality and stuff. So, um, it's a pretty cool nickname down here that they call me. Well, we'll, uh, we'll let you get going here momentarily, but before we do any shout outs you want to give sponsors, you want to thank for making this win happen. Yeah, I got to thank uh, Speed Factor, you guys, for uh, putting this event on. It's uh, good to come run this league with you all. So um, hopefully they come here more often. And then, uh, yeah. Well, congratulations, Alex. And we look forward to seeing you uh, back in Victory Lane sometime soon here in Elite. Thank you. That was Alex McCullum, your winner here tonight. And folks, that's just about going to do it for us. Of course, uh, coming up this week on the Elite Racing Network, we got lots of action for you still to come uh, to finish up this particular week of racing. It's going to be a busy one. Tomorrow night, the Cup Series is going to Brands Hatch. That is going to be quite the race. 100 laps around that circuit, so expect maybe some chaos, maybe some, some beef like we saw last night in the uh, Revilish Photography Grand National Series. And then, of course, Thursday night, the Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series is going to head to Long Beach for the fourth annual Black Magic Designs Long Beach Grand Prix. 85 laps around that circuit, 167 miles. So be sure to tune in for those races. Dave Huckleberry alongside David Westergreen and Gerald Campbell will bring you the action tomorrow night from Brands Hatch. Then Thursday, it's going to be Nick Massey alongside Derek Vance with all of the street circuit action from Long Beach. But on behalf of myself and all of our partners here, Blue Egg Marketing, Worldwide Technology Raceway, PitPassNetwork.com, and the folks here at the Elite Racing Network. We thank you for tuning in here tonight to the Iowa Corn 100, and we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night at Chicagoland. Have a good night, happy Easter, and we'll see you soon.